I can't sleep. Um, and it's funny because I was having this amazing conversation with myself in the living room because uh, Chase and Matt aren't here right now. And I just kept talking and I was like doing an I can't sleep video. So I was like, wait, I should turn on the camera. And so I did. And, um, I don't know, so, like, I was talking to myself about... <laughs> Does anyone else do that? Does anyone else actually just sit in their house and talk to themselves out loud? I just wonder. Like, I've been told that it's both a sign of intelligence and a sign of insanity. I agree with both of those things. I think if you're intelligent enough, you're gonna be insane. Or at least considered insane. Like, if your insanity is a matter of transcending sanity rather than falling short of it, those are the two distinctly opposite types of insanity as defined by society because, I mean, the definition of insanity or sanity has changed over the decades. So, like, a woman used to be considered insane for not having sex with her husband and he could put her in an asylum. <laughs> People used to be considered insane for being gay. <laughs> like, all kinds of dumb things were considered insanity that aren't anymore. So, who knows? It's just whatever... Whatever the psychiatrists vote for. I don't know. I don't know how these things evolve. I just know that they do. But what was I saying? <laughs> These videos are fun to make because I'm always stupid when I make them. <laughs> and that's what I was thinking about too, like, um... Not, still not getting to what, like, the thought that I haven't finished about what I was having a good deep conversation with myself about. Well, before that I was talking to myself about, um... This. And how funny it is to do this, <laughs> like, for someone to just, like, it's like I was realizing that I am one of those people that I look at on YouTube. I'm like, I'm one of those people legitimately... <laughs> Though I have a micro audience, I am one of those people with the um, mindset of, hey, I'm just going to turn on my camera and talk to the world. <laughs> like, I'm talking to myself, I might as well be talking to the world. And immortalizing my message, however cracked it may be. Like, you have to be a special kind of I don't know what to do that. There's, it's just like, I don't know if I want to say a mental illness. Like, there's a particular mental illness that makes you just decide that the thing to do is to just sit on your bed in your pajama pants and socks and just start rambling to the entire flippin' world. 26 of them may show up, and that's cool. But you've invited, like, 8 billion people to your party. Like, you just have to be... defective or something, I don't know. 
Because it isn't narcissism. Like, I've really been um, studying narcissism and finding out how much of a narcissist I am not. Like, I'm just, um... I'm just that particular kind of nuts where, that makes you want to share everything with everyone. <laughs> like, I wrote this story. Here it is in hardback. <laughs> Like, here it is in hardback, entire world. Please read it. <laughs> and like, like here is me sitting on my bed talking to myself like an insane person, or an intelligent person, or both. Here that is world, <laughs> entire earth. You can have this. <laughs> It's like there's no difference between talking to myself, Glenn, and talking to the entire human population, Glenn. And I think that's a hilarious thing to realize about oneself. <laughs> Most of the things I realize about myself are hilarious, though, to me. Uh, except when I'm angry. <clears throat> But yeah, what else was I talking to myself about? Because I was talking to myself about something before that. Like, I had a lot of things to say. What was it? Oh, it was about, like, a empathy and narcissism. Like, I'm going backwards, like, because I started out talking to myself in a rage. I've been angry a lot lately, and I don't know, I don't, I don't really want to talk about that. <laughs> Like, I don't really want to have an angry I can't sleep video. I kind of just want to wind down with my people. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but I was, that's what it is. Like, I'm, I'm definitely not an actual narcissist. I just play one on TV. <laughs> like, I actually just play one on TV. I'm, except, like, it's just kind of like how I look at myself is just, it's one of those hilarious recognitions, hilarious to me, where I'm just like, holy crap, I'm, like what I was just talking about, my, I'm sharing everything with the world, which is a nicer way of looking at it than I'm just full of myself. <laughs> like, which I am, like I like myself, I think I'm cool. Like I'd hang out with me and I do. So, like, I think it's funny that I'm this narcissist, but that's not what a narcissist is at all. That's just someone who likes themselves. And it, that's someone who's not ashamed. Like, that's what it is. It's not like I think I'm better than everybody. I'm just not ashamed of myself. And I often look at other people and the things they're ashamed of about themselves, and I don't understand why they're ashamed. Like, it really doesn't make sense to me. And that's cool, because, I mean, I felt shame as a child. It wasn't a pleasant feeling. I felt shame as a teenager. Like, I remember, I, I felt shame. I'm not a shameless person. I'm just not overall ashamed of myself. And so I don't have any kind of, like, I guess, mental boundary between myself, like, my internal thoughts and monologue, and what's worth saying to everyone. <clears throat> I think I might have taken too much sleep medicine. I just heard someone growl in another room in this house, and no one's home but me. Or I wouldn't have started this magnificent conversation with myself. I mean, we can make it a conversation, like... Who's growling in my house? Is there a lion here? I mean, it's probably just Lucifer again. 
But... What was I even saying? <laughs> right, I think I took too much sleep medicine. Um... No, but I was saying something about something. Oh, that's right. I was saying it doesn't have to be a one-sided conversation. Please comment down below. If it's still down below in your time, wherever the, com the comment section is, which right now, as I'm filming this, is down below the video. Um... Yeah, let's let's have a conversation. <laughs> um but right, so what I'm and I mean when I was um going to see a shrink often during my mother's final years when I was a caretaker and losing my mind. <laughs> um they always said I was an off the charts empath, but the question of narcissism never came up. That's only only I have ever identified myself as a narcissist, and I'm finding out it's just I'm not. Because it's the opposite of being empathic, and that's what it was I was talking to myself about out there. Was that I think one of my friends is, like, I don't know why there aren't more people who care about people, I guess. And I feel like there's one of my friends who I think really cares about people. The way that I do. And I'm like thinking about why that is. Why is it that that person genuinely cares about people? Like, because I feel like no one really does in my circle. Like, I mean, and that, because yeah, and that starts taking me back to like the angry part of the conversation and with myself that I don't really want to get into. Because I, I had talked myself up, and now I'm, like, going back in time. <laughs> so I'm going to turn on the camera, and I'm going to tell have this whole conversation again, but in reverse. <laughs> and go from happy to mad, with skipping the end. I'm going to skip over the where, where it was when I left off, and go back to everything before that. So, camera on. Let's demonstrate what insane people would do in the early 21st century. But yeah, so I was thinking about that and how like, I feel like a uh, life of crisis and tragedy is what forges an empath. And like, that's what it was, because I was thinking, you feel what other people feel because you have been so damaged you've been through so much horror in your life that you don't have any trouble putting yourself mentally in the shoes of whoever's talking to you and legitimately feeling what they're feeling because it's similar to something you've felt and you can easily just make an adjustment emotionally based on imagining yourself in the same scenario. And because you're just, you're very emotionally intelligent, I guess, because you've been wounded so much. And I thought that about this person. And I'm like, I bet that's what it is. Um, so... So yeah, I'm not a real narcissist, is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just full of myself. Um... <laughs> I'm thirsty. What Bolt House Farms? Wait... Oh yeah, this is vegan. I was about to be scared. Well, I think. Because you know, if you... If you don't, like, follow the rules, they kick you out of the cult. So, let's see if this is vegan. Uh... Da 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 da... 100% juice. Well, that'll do. 
Like, why would I even wonder? What, I guess this looks like chocolate milk. <laughs> but it's berry boost. It's just berries all mushed up. Like, if Matt and Chase were here, they'd probably think I'm strangling a goldfish. It's like... Do you even have to shake these? <laughs> or is just that is that just something that I do? Oh, I had way too much sleep medicine. Like it's having the opposite effect. I'm not even sleepy. I feel like I've been doing this for a solid hour and a half, but it's only been 17 minutes. Yup, that proves it. Too much, too much sleep medicine. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. So. Where was I? Okay, so I'd gone to the beginning and then I was gonna go back in time more if I didn't stop myself and being angry. Um, so, what I'm saying is that I'm crazy. No. <clears throat> okay, so, what I was talking about when I realized I should be filming this because I'm weird, and this is the sort of thing I film. <laughs> um, I was talking about, like, how... You know, I don't want to get political, so I'll skip kind of how I got into it with myself. <laughs> Talking about politics and stuff. But it kind of led to, like... Well, okay, so I was talking about... Like, this is funny, like, talking about how I was talking about something to myself while I'm talking about it to you. So anyway, I'm just gonna... I'm trying not to be political, because this is not the direction I want to go tonight. I'm trying to wind down, not up. Um, basically how, like, okay, so... Everyone's always comparing the MAGA movement to, like, the Confederacy. But... They're definitely not the Confederacy. <laughs> Like, and I'm talking, like, whenever I talk about um, a political party, and I consider MAGA a political party that's kind of, it's like a political sub-party to the Republicans. That's like a cancer that's eating them alive. And so, <laughs> you know, if you wondered where I stand politically, <laughs> just... But whenever I talk about a political party, I'm not talking about the voters as much as I'm talking about um, the leaders, the actual politicians. Like, voters, in my opinion, should not identify with a political party. We should identify with our own values and vote for whatever candidate actually has shown themselves to vote for those values. Um... And we should be independent. That's what I'm saying. The voter is an independent. We aren't financed by a political party. The politicians are the Democrats, the Republicans, the MAGA people. Those are the... You know, because I don't want to say that guy's name, because that guy is a narcissist and gets off on hearing his name everywhere. Ugh. <laughs> so... But I was talking about how that's, those aren't the same values. Like, they're the, de they're the descendants of those um, confederate values, but it, the confederates would not... Like, the Confederates were not trying to dismantle democracy, is what I'm saying. And that's not a defense of the Confederacy. 
It's just saying that they weren't as... Oh, God. It's, okay, so... I don't know how to say this. <laughs> like, I really don't know how to word this, I guess, is what... And not sound like I'm saying anything that I'm not saying. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just saying there is a difference. There are some overlapping values that are the reason I'm glad the Confederacy lost. <laughs> you know, like, the racism is... A dire the racism of the MAGA politicians is a direct descendant of the um, Confederate treatment of black people as slaves. <laughs> like, racism is not to me as bad as slavery. So, I'm not saying that the Confederates are better, or anyone's better or worse, I'm saying they had a different, and it is kind of like I'm saying the MAGA is, pe the MAGA politicians are worse than the Confederacy, but the Confederacy had slavery where, so I guess it balances, the Confederacy was all about slavery where the MAGAs are only about racism. <laughs> And the Confederacy was not trying to dismantle democracy. They were just trying to do it, in their opinion, better. Like, they wanted to do democracy with slavery. They wanted to do democracy with slaves. Instead of democracy without slaves. That's all... That, that's what that was all about. But... They still wanted to do democracy. So their evil was slavery. Their good was democracy. MAGA's evil is they want to dismantle... They don't have a good... Like, they're... <laughs> they want to dismantle democracy and... They are racists. <laughs> like, they're white supremacists. So, like, demonstrably and unashamedly white supremacist. So, that's, I guess, what I'm saying, is the evils are not better or worse. Well, no, I don't, that's not, uh, that's why I shouldn't be talking about this, because I don't know how to say it. Like, slavery is worse than racism. But both are bad. <laughs> and dismantling democracy is not one of the sins of the Confederacy. So, I'm going to stop talking about... I feel like I've been talking about that for three hours. But again, I've not even been talking for 30 minutes. Sleep medicine. <laughs> um... But right, I think it speaks to um, my values. Like, if I were a fictional character and I had this fictional family tree, I think it's um, it's a touch of foreshadowing to my character were I a fictional protagonist in some story that I had forebears fighting on both sides of the Civil War. Um, my great, great grandfather, James McKee Humphrey, fought for the Union. And he survived the Civil War. And my, I don't know how many greats, grandfather, <coughs> Benjamin C. Clark Jr., fought for the Confederacy. Confederacy, and he did not survive the Civil War. And I feel like that's a bit of foreshadowing to my values. 
like I had courageous ancestors on both sides who fought for what they believed in. I mean, Benjamin Clark Jr., he fought in, like, he was a teenager when he fought in the Texas Revolution. And then he was um, middle-aged when he died in the Civil War. And, you know, the Clarks never missed a revolution. <laughs> they, like, or a rebellion. My dad says that we're the revolting Clarks. <laughs> but, I mean, because they fought in the Revolutionary War, too. Benjamin Sr. So, now I'm rambling about my family tree, <laughs> but what I'm saying is like the Civil War, like that's where the, the country split over a value, um, and my family tree splits, and the one who was killed doesn't represent the values that I have today. The one who survived does. So, that's interesting to me. I just think it's fun. In sort of a what if I were a fictional character sort of world. I mean, everyone is. Everyone is a story. Everyone is the central character of their own story. We're all of these intersecting stories in this elaborate continuity. I love it. But yeah, so that's all I was saying. I was just, I'm done like talking about the conversation I had before y'all got here. <laughs> that's all I'd had to say. And then I was like, I should go talk about something completely different on camera. <laughs> and wound up talking about the same stuff, but at least I didn't talk about the stuff that made me mad. But yeah, I don't know. Like, these are scary political times. Those of you doing history reports in the future, people are scared. But, I don't know. People are always scared. When they can't trust their leaders to have their interests, uh, the people's interests at heart. Because there's two ways of looking at it. You either look at it as we serve the leaders, or the leaders serve us. And I feel like the leaders see it as the people serve the leaders. And a lot of the people think it's that way too. Even though it doesn't serve their interests. But it's a democracy, it's a republic, so we should have leaders who serve us. Or they should be gone. But somehow, leaders who only serve themselves keep getting elected. <laughs> like, just taking money and voting for what big corporations want them to do or pay them to do. Like, they're all taking bribes. It just ticks me off. That's what makes it scary times. Because... It's just so close. Like there are people who vote in favor of what they think is best for the people, and there are people who vote in favor of whichever lobbyists paid them the most money. And that's like how rich people are running the country. because they're buying politicians, and it's just, it's almost half and half. 
like the balance of power just appears to be so neck and neck. So it's scary times. Because if you listen to these people, the maggot chief, in his own words, he's talking about dismantling democracy. And he has all these sycophants who worship him and will vote for whatever he wants. So it's terrifying because, I don't know, I feel like if ever America had a cacistocracy, it was during the time of the 45th president. And a cacistocracy is basically rule by the least qualified people. <laughs> so, I don't think we'll go back there. But that's kind of what I was thinking. It's like, you don't go back. That's what had gotten me, seeing I got political, that's what um, had gotten me thinking about the Confederacy and the MAGA movement and how they're really not the same thing, because I was um, thinking about how people think if we vote for the guy who wants to dismantle democracy and he wins and manages to do it, we'll just undo it later. And I was just thinking about how history shows that's probably not what's going to happen. Like, you, you don't come back. When an empire falls, it doesn't come back. The South will not rise again. And that's what got me thinking about the Confederacy, how that's not coming back. And that's why I was like, because the MAGA movement, people say, oh, that's, they're just the Confederacy. I'm like, but they're not the Confederacy. They're something new. Because it's the Confederacy fell. It's not coming back. If the United States as a democracy falls, it's not coming back. It won't be the same. It may... It may go back to democracy, but it won't be the same. Um, and that's just like if you just look at history and the rise and fall of any government. You know, if they have a revolution, it doesn't ever take you back to exactly what it was before. It's always something new. Like, if democracy falls in America, we're not going to go back to the British Empire. We're, we're not going to have, we're not going to have the president hand over the reins to King Charles. Like, it's just not going to happen. You're not going back. Because when something falls, it falls for a reason. There has to be a fatal flaw in the government that gets exploited and can't be fixed. Like the system won't allow it to be fixed because the wrong people got elected, too many of them, and they just dismantle. <laughs> like that's how a democracy can fall apart. But the thing is that any government, like if there's not a fatal flaw to the system, it wouldn't have fallen. Even if that fatal flaw is just um, that you were not stronger than the army that conquered you. That they had weapons that were superior to your weapons. But if you get conquered, you're gone. Like, you are absorbed into the conqueror's government. 
So you're not getting back what you have. So that's all I was thinking about. Like, were we to hypothetically lose democracy in this country, the United States of America will not rise again. There will be other things in its place. Some of them may be somewhat similar, but it won't be the same. So, I feel like people should be taking it more seriously. Because people think we can just bounce back from anything. But when you fall, you are gone as a government, as a particular society of laws and social expectations, like, it's gone. Like I said, the South will not rise again. And good, because they want slaves, so... Uh, I don't understand people. That's like, why, why are there so many uncaring people? Like, why was there slavery? I don't know. I just... Humans are so... We have such a tremendous capacity for evil. And we have such a tremendous capacity for good. And I just... I don't understand how, like... Systemic evil exists. Like, it just feels like... If we know something is wrong, we shouldn't do it. And I know, like, it's not that simple. You know, I'm not saying, like, oh, well, if you know smoking is wrong, you should just not do it. Well, you have an addiction. That's not... For me to say, just don't... Like, any advice that starts with the word just, just isn't worth listening to. So, because they're diminishing whatever the um, problem is. Like, whatever... They're diminishing your experience. Like, what you're actually dealing with. When they say, just buy a lollipop. I don't know what the magical solution is, but it starts with the word just... And it doesn't take you seriously. So, yeah, I'm not saying, like, it's easy to resist the temptation to do something self-serving that happens to be an evil against other people. I guess everybody has those temptations. But, um, I just don't understand how you don't figure out why something is wrong. That it's not... Like, how do you feel good about yourself owning another human being and whipping them and splitting their skin and chaining them up and treating them like cattle? Like, how did that happen is what I don't... It's But it did. It happened. Like, this capacity for evil took over the civilized world. The so-called civilized world, where we're treating humans like cattle, and it goes back to antiquity. But here in the United States, it was always race-based slavery. It doesn't, and that doesn't make sense to me either. I don't understand racism. Like... How that can take hold and govern the entire outlook and philosophy of a society. I just think it's weird. And so... So I do, I do take evil seriously when it's so prevalent in a society. 
I just don't know why it is. Because it isn't like mental illness. Like these people are raised to think things. Like you're raised to think racist things. And if you don't get out in the world and meet people, nothing is going to change your mind. Because if you're told a thing about a race you've never met all your life, you don't have anything to weigh that information against. Because you've never met whatever race you've been told to think of as lesser than. So how do you know they're literally just other people? <laughs> and so... I don't know, it's, I'm laughing because it's absurd. It's an absolute absurdity that we can be racist. <laughs> it doesn't compute. And see, that's something, I mean, that's something where I feel like I'm ashamed of the human race. <laughs> it's, I feel... It's like embarrassing to be... You know, it's like if... <laughs> you have to warn your friends who work at the bookstore with you that your mom is that, that customer. <laughs> you know, it's like you're related, you're like... <laughs> Uh, I guess that's how I feel about it. Like, I'm related to those people in this time who are racist. <laughs> and, I mean, it's just like, I know, I know that thousands of years in the future, they laugh at racists. <laughs> I mean, all the, um... scientific projections I've read about what we're going to look like in hundreds of years think that there's pretty much only going to be one race. Race. Skin tone. And that's sad to me because that's boring, but... But those folks... I didn't mean to call y'all boring future people. My future progeny, my heirs to my wisdom. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're still people, you still have personalities, and I'm sure you're incredibly interesting. I'm just saying, I love diversity, and I, I am sad at the idea of losing diversity, but it is what it is, because, I mean, we lose diversity by embracing it. Ironically, like the races accepting each other, erase each other. And I think that's actually fine because that means there's no more racism. So I'm down with it. But that's why those people laugh at us. In the future, they literally giggle at the idea of being a racist. Because they can't fathom the notion of it. And I guess that's how I'm looking at, like, yeah, here I am with those humans who think people who have different colored skin are bad <laughs> for absolutely no reason. Nothing to do with those people's ethics or actions. They're just, it's, it's terrible to be that color. It literally doesn't make sense. And like, why do we argue over which humans get which rights? Like, why can't we just erase race and gender from... Well, that's not... See, because that's not... See, I keep saying the wrong words. But I'm saying, like, there should be, what I'm trying to say is that there should be no question. Like, it should, in an ideal world, which we're not in, 
go without saying that no matter what your gender is and no matter what color your skin is, the rights are all the same. The pay for the position is all the same. There's not a man's salary and a woman's salary or a white salary and an anything but white salary. Like, those things aren't real. <laughs> In an ideal world, it does not need to be debated. Like, yes, if you are a woman doing the same job as a man with the same amount of experience and the same amount of expertise you should be being paid the same salary like why are, that should be codified into law forthwith Just universal equal rights go, should go without saying. There should be a law to that effect. But everybody's had to fight who wasn't a rich white property owner. I mean, that's those are the people who had the power. And it slowly but surely started spreading out. But... I mean, it's crazy if you think about how recent it is that women got the right to vote. And how recent it is that black people had separate water fountains. Just nuts. It's nuts. And it's so recent. Like, all of that was before my time, but it was, it's still, like, so recent. But yeah, I mean, we've been, every group of humans that wasn't a rich white property owner has had to fight, they've had their turn to fight for being treated equal to that. And I should add straight, I should add every minority to the, the rich, no, not minority, you know what I mean, like, Everyone who's had to fight for their rights to equality in this country over the past centuries since our founding was not represented by the founders themselves. <clears throat> not openly anyway. I'm sure there were gay founding fathers or bisexual ones. I haven't looked closely into it, honestly. But people were there, you know. All the people who are here today fighting for rights were there back then, not having them. So, that's one of those human evils that troubles me. But if you look at the long story, like, we've come so far. We've had ups and downs and ups and downs, but the ups are always higher and the downs are always shallower and so we're actually we've moved a long way from where we started and where we started as a nation is better than where we were before so that's why I think We are probably going to keep moving towards freedom and equality. The long game. So yeah, when I when I know someone else who I think is deeply empathic, it gives me hope. Is I guess where I should be going with this. Like, I just wonder what it's like to be surrounded. by deeply empathic people. <laughs> like, where do you find that? Like, would that feel like being just like a golden retriever and getting pets and scratches from, like, 
whoever. Like, I just feel like that's the state of bliss I'd be in. <laughs> but then for all I know, everyone I know is deeply empathic. I'm just so, like, jaded <laughs> by life. That I just assume people don't, because I know some people don't. I guess, like, I've encountered so many people who openly don't care about people that I guess I kind of brace myself for most people to be like that. To care a little, but not a lot. <clears throat> So, I mean, it would be interesting. Like, I feel like if we were, if the world were full of people who cared a lot, then yeah, things like equal, human equality would go without saying. Things like animal rights would go without saying. Like, factory farming would be gone. We'd be saving the environment, not the oil industry. We'd be taking care of people, and I guess that's what I feel like a government should do if we're electing pe a government should serve the people or it should go away. Like, we elect these people to make decisions on our behalf, to be representatives of us, and if they're not doing that, then it's not a worthwhile government. So, I like elections. I like that we can fire our politicians. And it does not escape me that there's one party that wants us to vote and there's one party that does not want us to vote. And that is, they don't hide it. They don't pretend that they aren't trying to suppress the vote. They say it out loud in front of cameras. So, <laughs> it's just crazy to me that people vote for them. And you know, political parties, their values shift over time. Because the conservative party of today was the liberal party of yesterday. Oh, I got a text message. No, I didn't. It's a lie. Okay. Oh, right, I was looking at the time. Okay, yeah. I actually paid attention to what time I started <laughs> so that I wouldn't ramble for nine hours, which I feel like I could do. So, it's about that time. <laughs> I can maybe go to sleep now. I don't know. Kind of revved up for some reason. Oh, right, because I've just been ticked off all the time. That gets my batteries going, I guess. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, this was a crazy one. If you sat through it, I greatly appreciate you. Like, I'm so, like, uh, I'm tired, but I'm not, like, I definitely do that, like, revenge staying awake thing that everybody's talking about <laughs> these days where you don't have time during the week, and so you stay up late, like, to get revenge on the world taking away your time to be yourself, to live your life. I do that. Revenge, sleep, procrastination, is that what it's called? I don't know. So I'm tired, but I'm revved up. I don't want to go to bed. But I need to go to bed. So, I'm going to call it a video. I mean, these videos are always wacko, but they're not always this wacko. Like, I feel like this was a particularly cracked episode of my I Can't Sleep series, but I hope you enjoyed it. It was, it was cathartic for me, because I'm, I'm full of myself. I'm a narcissist. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, 
This non-narcissist has an author website called glennsladeclarkjr.com where you can find all of my uh, books, my novels, my short stories, um, links to all the videos I've put up on YouTube, the podcast I do with Matt called Autodidactica. Um, it's all there if you want to stalk me. If you, if you would like to sample the things I'm sharing is the way I look at it. Um, I'm sharing things and you go to glensladeclarkjr.com and you can see all of it and partake, if you will, if you are so inclined. Um, so, I'm gonna go to sleep now. Thanks for sitting up with me.